I'm John Magnuson with the Cedar Tree Institute, and we're here to launch Earth Keepers 2, an interfaith environmental initiative in the coming two years with a focus on energy conservation and community gardens and bring back the native plants. Community church gardens. I have faith in seeds. Very good things will come from this. Delta Green is the technical partner. This is building on the work that our collaborative communities participated in from 2004 to 2009. And thanks to the United States Forest Service and the United States Environmental Protection Agency, at the heart of this work is a group of students from Northern Michigan University. My name is Tom Merkel. My name is Caitlin Bingner. I'm Adam Magnuson. But we will be working with tribes, especially Keweenaw Bay, and I want to honor them. Expect great wonders. So to close the conference here, uh, two days ago I was on, on the Sioux St. Marie Tribal Reservation, and uh, I was talking about this project, and I was sitting across from a tribal member, Catherine Brosmer, and I was talking about this event today. And without, without a blink of the eye, she said this to me, I have no doubt that no plant will spring from the land without seed being sown. But I have faith in seeds. Convince me that there's a seed there, and I will expect great wonders. <laughs> and I went, what? And she said, Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> so uh, that, I'm going to use that uh, quote to close us. And again, uh, honoring all our speakers, especially our native friends who have come from the Keweenaw Bay community. Uh, we have uh, a blessing that we're going to invite one of our longtime leaders and respected teachers in this project, Charlie West, United Methodist pastor, to lead us in, to bless us. We have food for everybody. And although some may have to hit the road right away, we also have gifts for everyone. Uh, one of the, the protocols of this project is gift giving. So if you ever come to an Earth Keeper event in the future, You'll walk away with something. And uh, Adam and Caitlin and Tom will be uh, offering you, uh, right following the grace, this gift. And would you like to say what it is, Adam, what we're going to offer? Uh, Hand-picked uh, seeds. Yes, hand-harvested hand seeds. Again, not available anywhere <laughs> except uh, to the volunteers who have picked them. You can't get these at any store. They're heritage seeds of local and medicinal plants that you find here in the Upper Peninsula, as well as a description of the project. So uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna call on Charlie to lead us with song, which uh, the people of faith always, always enter into. Let us together say thank you, amen. Let us together say thank you, amen. For the gift of clean water in lakes and in streams, let us together say thank you, Amen. For the gift of the grain milled into flour, let us together say thank you, Amen. For the fruits of the earth in faraway fields, let us together say thank you, Amen. For the skill and the labor that brings us this food, let us together say thank you, Amen. For the gift of each one here gathered in grace. Let us together say thank you, Amen. One of the words that many of us in the Christian family have experienced in this Sunday, reading or hearing, talking about, maybe thinking about, is Isaiah 62. You shall no more be termed forsaken. And your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her, Hepzibah, and your land happily married, Beulah. Always been fond of that verse, my mom's name was Beulah. So. But what strikes me this time around is that the well-being of the people and the well-being of the land are intertwined 
they go hand in hand. We could say a lot about that, but this is meant to be just the blessing of the food. Living in a place of great blessing and in a time of great blessing, we are indeed a people greatly blessed. Let us together say, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I know that very good things will come from this. That is community church gardens, whether it be a vegetable garden, a healing garden, a meditation garden, herb garden. My native plant garden in Milwaukee is about 20 feet by 15 feet, and it is just a delight for me to see my workers in there. In the morning and coming back in the evening, the male bombus or bumblebees roost. My garden serves as a repository for those native bees and other pollinators for my whole urban community. These small native gardens serve as the pollinator source for the vegetable garden, not just in that churchyard, but in the neighborhood. And that is really a delightful thing. Those church lots and other uh, facilities related to that really do matter, and what we are doing really does matter.